Hello everyone, my name is Fernicia. I'm teaching at Architecture Department of Universitas Pelita Harapan, Indonesia. The research title I'd like to present today is Overlook the Performance of Architectural Drawing. In this research I conduct with Ardi Hartono, we focus on the performative aspect of drawing and storytelling as part of our design learning process. So we know that architectural learning happens through our built environment, through our own body, as well as through representation. When we're inside architecture, actually we're never able to escape it, we kind of have this direct, constant, embodied relationship with the architecture, with the space. But then, when we try to represent it, we see it from the outside and we use pen and paper and try to represent it, we kind of have this distance from the object. That enables us to be more objective in looking at the architecture as well as to manipulate it. We can agree on this, on these two ways of learning. But what I want to focus on this paper is the second way of learning, which is the one that happens through representation. When we represent an architectural idea on a paper, we kind of talk about the architecture. But then, there is also this one thing, when we decide to draw it in a certain way, we kind of connect with the paper, more or less we could say spatially. This is what's called the embodied relationship between the drawing and our body. So this is an example. If we are going to present our design in a desk grid format, we may want to choose A3 paper. But if we are going to, to present it on a wall presentation, we might want to choose a bigger size of paper so that people could see our drawing. This, in this sense, we use our awareness of how the drawing could connect to our body only pragmatically, I would say. The question is, can it be more than just pragmatic? Can the embodied relationship with the representation perform the architectural idea that is being represented? If the answer is yes, how? So to answer that question, I'd like to borrow this theory from narratology. In narratology, a representation always has these two layers, digitic aspect and extra digitic aspect. The first one pertains to the narrative, which is more about the content, and the second one is anything that's outside the narrative, which is the media. How does it apply to drawing? Again, drawing about architecture means showing and telling the architecture. And when the drawing tries to architecturally connect with the audience, which is through the medium, the drawing performs the idea. So back to this little drawing. So whatever appears on the page is about the architecture, we show and tell the architecture, and then uh, how we hold the paper, how we see the paper, how, uh, how much we distance ourselves from the paper is more about the spatial relationship with the drawing. So the question is, how does this relationship between our body and the paper becomes more fundamental in, in translating the idea we, we would like to communicate? Now I'd like to use case studies to render you the idea about the answer of that question. I have three projects uh, as the case studies. First is the project by Richard McGuire called Here. And then the second, an elective class in Universitas Pita Harapan, it's called Architectural Storytelling. And then the third one, uh, independent workshop held by Dua Studio, uh, titled Unfamiliar Familiar. Okay, this is the first project here by Richard McGuire. If, if we are to dissect the cover from an anthology perspective, we would see it this way. So there is this window with a curtain 
it, it lies on a wall, a uh, gray wall, and then we can see how it is half shaded, and definitely the window is open, and on the open part, we could see the word here. If we take uh, the extra digitic way to see it, we'll see how the overall um, appearance of the book, how it is actually a hardcover book, and the size and the heaviness of it, the weight of it, we could see how it is actually trying to resemble the wall of a building. So maybe we could feel as if we're looking at the building from outside and the title there uh, on the inside here, the, the title of the book, wants us to come here to, to get into the house. Okay, these are the spreads of the book. It is always a full spread picture with boxes on top of it. And on the top left corner of every spread, in every box, we could see a year written. From this description, we get the idea that um, a certain thing, whether it's human, animal, or object, happens to be there, to be here, in that year. This is the show and tell of the book. The performing aspect, though, always has to do with our own body. As we hold the book, or when, as we probably put the book on the table, we could see that the spine of the book is always there, and that the spine always points out to the corner of the room. So the corner of the room always stays there, always stays on the spine, always stays on our desk or on our hand. Here, then, um, what it want to say is that the here itself, this certain location on Earth, is the main subject of this book. This is how a certain location evolves through time. Here, of course, is not the only published graphic novels that uh, can perform this uh, aspect. But then again, I think I'd like to choose this one, this particular one, as the as the example because not only that it is available in the form of a book, it was also um, exhibited, and the exhibition itself tries to uh, the way I see it, it tries to perform the book itself in in a more in a more embodied way. So this is why this is special. So, um, let's get into the second project. The second one is the elective class that Ardi and I uh, held in 2019. It's called Architectural Storytelling. In this election class, Ardi and I took the students in a field trip. So, we took the students to a site visit to Tan Chang Ai's house in Jakarta. Tan Chang Ai is a renowned um, senior architect in Indonesia um, and he is famous for his clarity of design and his detailed design. Uh, being so senior and, and uh, having those love to share, we get the students to meet him and then to wander around his house. So on the left is Pak Tan and the others are the students. At the back is Ardi talking with the students. So, the students have to find what's interesting for them in the house, what architectural idea that they want to take home with them. They have to take the data, and then at home, at the school, uh, they have to try to represent the architectural idea that they have gathered, and then to disseminate it through a visual product. So, in this paper, I select three products of the students. The first project is in the details. Since Pak Tan is famous for his detailed design, the students want to invite the audiences to take a look at Pak Tan's design in a more detailed way. So, in order to get to that intention, the students use this uh, form, which is the Find the Difference book. The audience are asked to compare the scenes. 
The left page has Patan's details design on it, while the right one is the common design. At the end of the book, the student gives answer key, and then some of which are elaborated further. This is the second one. The other, the other group, look at the act of cleaning in the house, describing the three parts of the house that needs to be cleaned differently, namely the floor, the wall, and the ceiling. The pages of the book is also divided into three parts. Through this way of representing the idea, the audience are given the freedom to read the book. They can select one element of the building and trace it from the front to the, to the inside, or from the front to the back, and then go back to the front and select like the others for three times. Or they can trace the three parts from top to bottom and then move to the next page from top to bottom and then the next page again. They can do that until the end. This way, reading the book is analogous with the act of cleaning itself. The third visual product is a playing card. The architecture of Tan Chang Ai is acclaimed for its clarity of space and openings that allows for natural sunlight. So this group of students aim to enable the audience to independently make sense of the rooms through a playing card game. This is the opening cards explaining the, the way the game is played, must be played. So that um, there are six rooms and then each room is represented through four cards, two axonometric drawings, and then one floor plan, and then one sectional perspective. So the playing card can be played by two or more players. When the game, the player needs to be the first to collect the matching depiction of the room. So through this act of playing, the audience will learn to read the room specially. Okay, the third one, the third project is the critical context workshop titled Unfamiliar Familiar, held by Dua Studio in uh, 2019 in Gangloria. It's a heritage tribe in North Jakarta that is famous for its Chinese culture. So Dua Studio and the eight uh, participants went to make their individual observation. What's unique about this workshop is the observation and the representation approach. Departing from Eames' power of 10, the participants was asked to scrutinize the phenomena that occur in, stripe, in the stripe closely and represent them not in 1 to 100 or 1 to 50 or 1 to 10 scale drawing, but in 1 to 1 or even up to 10 to 1 scale drawings. The result, when it is printed, we got to see what our eyes don't usually get to see. This is the first one. The title of the project is called Serbu. Serbu in Indonesia means go get it. Um, it's made by Fidelia. Uh, she aims to render this phenomenon of eating in warung. Warung is a small temporary in, informal restaurant in which people will sit side by side, elbow to elbow, while they are eating. If we see it on the screen, like at the moment, we can see the closeness of people who are trying to grab and bring the food from the center of the table to their own plate. However, printing them in one-to-one -one size, this line drawing method astonished us with its detail. So this one uh, rectangular paper is an A4 paper. So you can imagine how big it is. And this is the astonishing detail. The, this depiction uh, can give us not only the sense of 
the texture of the food, the food, but also probably the taste of it. Okay, now the second project by Kanza Fahriza, it's called The Path. Here, Kanza aims to highlight the architectural elements that is almost always forgotten, which is the floor. Since the stripe lies on a public space, we usually be there with our shoes or sandals on. That said, we hardly ever really feel the texture that we are stepping on. Through this print version, Kanza invites us to feel the texture through our eyes. This is uh, during the presentation uh, in the workshop final. This is the one-to-one -one scale of the drawing of the path. And this is the two-to-one. And then zooming in again, the five-to-one. So if Yuhani Palasma has that the eyes of the skin, this project wants us to see the skin of the eyes. Last but not least, uh, this project is titled Knock Knock Who's There Time. It's by Nadia Winaga. Nadia wants to share about an old barber shop. It's called Kotang. It's founded in 1936. And we can see, we can imagine that the door has uh, been through a lot of things. Openings, close, closings, uh, scratches perhaps, right? So when we see it from across the road, we might we might see it this way. But we, if we want to take a look closer to that rectangle there over there, we might see this, and then closer, we see this. What are those? We probably kind of interested right now to see if those are scratches or stains on the on the i don't know panel dorong means push in indonesian so we're close enough well, let's take a look closer let's touch all right so this is the hands if we stand this close what does it reveal so this is the presentation format in the workshop if we zoom in to that photo, this is an A4 of the drawing. Okay, so those things that we see, scratches and stains, when we take a look closer, this is the way it is. One to one scale drawing, and if we see it close enough to the wall, we can see fingerprints. So those are not stains, those are fingerprints that are being the trace of the history of the uh, barbershop. I wonder how many fingerprints is actually there. So yeah, that's it. The seven projects to render you the idea about the performative aspect of drawing. I'd like to conclude that, so even though drawing is a representational tool, not the actual built environment, we can learn from it not only through its telling and showing, but also through its performing aspect. By using our body, we can see how the idea that the drawing wants to represent is performed to us. Um, this presentation is definitely not the best way to tell you about this idea. This is not the best scenario. We expect it to really bring the projects before your eyes for you to touch and experience yourself. But this is the best that we could do at this moment. If you ask what we're going to do next, uh, we're looking forward to see if drawing could be used as a learning tool when it's done um, collectively, interactively, and virtually. Maybe it could generate different kind of uh, learning. And then we also love to would love to talk about this with you if you're interested. And yeah, at last, yeah, at last, thank you for the opportunity.